Today on DC News Now, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Prince George's County to discuss the economy. We're in Largo with what you can expect to hear. Sunny skies in store for your Thursday, but we're tracking rain in your weekend. MPD reporting overall crime in the district has dropped 35 percent from last year. Why residents still say they don't feel safe. Also, MoCo students heading back to school could see metal detectors when they enter the hallways. What safety changes we can expect this school year. And a Southwest D.C. neighborhood is coming together for an important community event. How you can stretch your dollar and meet your neighbors. Thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. We are following breaking news in Prince George's County, Maryland. Right now, one adult, three children have been injured in a crash. It happened on the Capitol Beltway outer loop at the Branch Avenue ramp, and that's where we find DC News Now's Liberty Zabala. Liberty, what can you tell us? Well, Mark, this is such a horrific crash, and I want to show you Maryland Route 5 here behind me, and you can see two lanes are currently blocked off, and traffic is just getting by in one lane, that shoulder lane right there, and I want to direct your attention now to the car involved. You can see it right there. The front end just completely smashed in. Now, Virginia State Police say officers were trying to pull that car over and the driver refused to stop initiating a pursuit. Now VSP says this happened just before nine this morning. Officers were attempting to pull over the car while it was traveling northbound on I-95 right near the 166 mile marker in Fairfax County. The driver then led police on a chase and continued north on I-495 into Maryland. That's where officers say the driver lost control and crashed here near exit 7. Right now, Maryland State Police and Virginia State Police are working together at the scene and they say there are multiple injuries. The crash right now remains under investigation. Now, we have been able to confirm with Prince George's County Fire EMS that one adult and three children inside were injured and that a medevac also assisted here at the scene. But as you can see here, they are urging drivers to expect delays. As you can see, drivers right now just getting by here on Route 5 through that one shoulder lane. But I'll send it back to you, Mark, in the studio. Again, our thanks to Liberty Simmons, a meteorologist Damon Madison joined us with the latest check in the forecast. A Damon, 90 degree temps, but low humidity. Otherwise, we're seeing that warm up getting going as we head now into this Thursday afternoon. But the key factor that we've had all week that's made it feel so beautiful is that lower humidity and high pressure is to thank for that. It pretty much is settled right over the DMV as we move here into the second half of the day. That being the case, we're going to have fairly sunny skies, very light winds, and that's what's going to allow those temperatures to rise. But at the same time, keep that humidity low. Now off on the horizon, this will be our next rainmaker. Some showers and storms popping up over the Midwest into the Great Lakes, and that's what we'll, we will be keeping our eye on as we move into the weekend. But to go along with some of that sunshine today, unfortunately, we are still seeing just a little bit of that haze still in the sky. This is the case here across much of the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast, this darker gray color indicating that we still have a little bit of that wildfire smoke from Canada lingering in the the air. So don't be surprised to see that haze as we go through the rest of your day with temperatures peaking in the upper 80s to lower 90s and then mixing in with that with that next storm system approaching clouds will start to arrive as we head into the evening time. But rainfall does not look to be a factor until we get into the day on Friday. Who is most likely to see a little bit of that soggy weather before the weekend begins? We'll have that answer coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. Uh Damon, thank you. And happening today in Maryland, President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris will make a stop at Prince George's Community College. It's the first appearance that the two will make together since the president decided to step down from the presidential race. Uh, News Nation's Kelly Meyer reports from Prince George's County, Maryland, where the president and the vice president will speak today. 
President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris back on the campaign trail for the first time since President Biden passed the torch to Harris now 25 days ago. The two will be discussing how they are lowering costs for Americans, they say, starting with health care. Now, they're set to announce that the first round of Medicare drug price negotiations will save an estimated $6 billion. President Biden saying in a statement this morning that for the first time in history, his administration reached these agreements on new lower drug prices with the manufacturers of all 10 drugs selected. Now, this is just the first round of drug price negotiations. The administration is saying and President Biden has been criticized for high costs for Americans and snapped back when asked if the U.S. has beat inflation. Take a listen. Yes, yes, I told you we're going to have a soft landing. We're going to have a soft landing. My policies are working. Start writing that way, OK? And while the administration isn't saying it publicly, there are areas where Harris will diverge with Biden on some of these main topics. We're set to learn more as she talks about her agenda and vision for the future, specifically in regards to the economy on Friday. Our thanks to Kelly Meyer. And earlier today, former President Donald Trump reacted to the news of uh, Harris and Biden saying that, quote, Kamala Harris wants nothing to do with crooked Joe Biden. He goes on to say that, quote, he now hates Obama and crazy Nancy more than he hates me. And take a look at this brand new polling numbers from Emerson College show Vice President Harris leading former President Trump 50 to 46 percent. Five percent of the would be voters remain undecided. The former president's support has dropped two points in the last month. Harris is winning support from voters under the age of 30 and over the age of 70. Well, D.C. police releasing new crime data showing a drop in violent crime and crime overall. Well, the decrease comes after uh, violence last year. Before, following the breaking news of the crash in Prince George's County, D.C. News Now's Liberty Simmons was at MPD headquarters, and she has more on the decrease. Though it may not feel like it in some neighborhoods, MPD says overall crime is down by as much as 35% from last year, but still some residents say they don't feel safe. So take a look at these newly released crime statistics from Metropolitan Police. It shows a 30% drop in homicides from last year, a 1% drop in sex abuse crimes, and a 41% drop in robbery. And it's part of an overall trend that MPD says shows its crime initiatives are making an impact. Chief Pamela Smith just celebrated her anniversary as chief last month. Back then, she told DC News Now the drop is largely due to shifting strategies and crime legislation pushed by Mayor Muriel Bowser and passed by the D.C. City Council. Still, she agreed with many residents who say more needs to be done. So what our job is to do is to continue to, con to have those conversations with those members who don't feel safe and to determine what we can do better. Now, it's important to note that these crime statistics don't necessarily mean that crime is low or in a good spot right now, but the chief says it does show that the work that police are doing is causing some reduction for now in northwest dc liberty simmons dc news now uh, liberty thank you it's been 15 days since loved ones say they last saw a virginia mother who was pregnant yesterday many of them gathering at blooms park in manassas searching for the 28 year old Monta Coffey was reported missing by her husband august 5th and that's five days after she was last seen or heard from Police said it does not appear that she left on her own, and Copley's husband attended the search efforts, calling on anyone with information to come forward. Keep doing what you are doing, and then in a positive way, just help us in this tough time. If anything happened to her, I want her to get justice, um, because I don't think anybody should go through this. Well, we reached out to Manassas Park Police, and they tell us that they are not able to share where things stand in the investigation at this time. And making security changes, Montgomery County Schools looking to enforce new policies that would prevent weapons from entering classrooms. DC News Now's Christian Pena looks into the plan to keep kids safe. Increased security may be coming to Montgomery County Public High Schools, and for some, it can't come any sooner. I think schools are not safe, period. 
I think that honestly, anywhere you go nowadays, there's like some danger. Current head of security, safety and emergency management for MCPS Marcus Jones is considering implementing weapon detectors to its high schools. According to MCPS officials, the plans are fluid as the school system is in the initial phase of talking with vendors on what weapon detectors may look like. I would probably consider just like a combination of increased awareness and education programs. In a statement to DC News Now, MCPS says they're, quote, in an initial step in identifying potential solutions to strengthen our safety measures. The move comes after Montgomery County Police reports a student was arrested in October for bringing a gun to Walter Johnson High School. Action students in the area say are continuing to distract them from learning. We should be able to be focused on our math, focused on how stupid our trigonometry test was, not what the quickest route out of the building is. MCPS says they're currently exploring various options that may enhance classroom security. Yet one thing young adults would not like to see implemented are metal detectors. It feels like an airport and like school shouldn't exactly feel like an airport. I get like the thought process behind it, but also as a student, it's it's hard. Well, it's time to search for dollars uh, for your dollar this morning. We are focusing on technology for kids, especially since you many of them are heading back to class. And if you're looking to save some money, here are some options. Consider refurbished items like laptops and phones and tablets and cameras. And you can look for them online at Amazon, eBay or popular retail stores like Walmart, Target or Best Buy. Experts say that it's the best to look for a certified product and check out the seller's warranty. That would include any pre-existing warranties. And you can also save by joining some big box stores membership programs. Walmart's Plus program is free for 30 days and then $6.50 a month or $49 a year. Amazon Prime student is free for the first six months. After that, it's about $7.50 a month or close to 70 bucks a year over the over to Best Buy. There are two annual programs. One is called the Plus. It costs $50. The other is called the Total, and it's a little under 180 bucks. Families can head into the new school year with a squeaky clean car. Mr. Wash is offering complimentary car washes tomorrow, and we've got a list of 11 locations listed on our website, dcnewsnow.com.